thoughtfulness, right? Number three, gentleness. Someone say gentleness. Gentleness is strength under control. Strength under control. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.24 says, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. You know what all means in the original Greek? It means everybody. Those who like you, those who don't like you, those who argue with you, those who pat on the back. It says, be gentle to all. Gentleness is strength under control. I was studying this and I, I, I read from a pastor. He wrote in 1839, this pastor wrote, that there may be no grace less prayed for or cultivated than gentleness. This is what he wrote about gentleness in 1839. He said, there may be no grace less prayed for or cultivated than gentleness. And you know what? I would suggest 179 years later today that his statement is still true. That his statement is still true. I never ever hear anybody pray, Lord, make me more gentler. I never hear anybody pray, Lord, uh, give me more gentleness. I never ever hear anybody pray that. Lord, make me more gentle. No, I never hear... Anybody pray that gentleness is probably the most neglected and ignored fruit of the spirit, uh, partly because it's misunderstood so much, partly because it's misunderstood. Our generation thinks that gentleness means weakness, but that's wrong. Gentleness does not mean weakness. Gentleness means strength under control. And in the original Greek language, this word gentleness refers to a stallion, a strong, wild stallion that has been tamed. That has been tamed. The reason why they tamed the stallion is so that the stallion could be good for use. When the stallion is tamed, it doesn't lose any of its strength or any of its might or any of its power. The tameness helps the stallion to be used by the master. And so when gentleness is prepared and produced and cultivated in your life, what it does, it doesn't make you weak. It makes you fit for the use for the master because he can't use you when you're buck wild. Can't use you when you're uncontrollable. You waste your energy and waste your dreams when you, when you don't, when you, when you can't put your strength under control. Gentle people are probably some of the most strongest people in the world. In fact, in Matthew 5, 5, it says that uh, the gentle shall inherit the earth. It's weak people that are rude. It's weak people that are mean. It's weak people that are domineering. You know why? Because they can't control their emotions. Can't control their emotions. But, but, but gentle people, it's strength under control and it causes us to be used by the master. Now, gentleness does a lot of amazing things in our life. But I want to point out just a couple. One, gentleness diffuses conflict. It diffuses conflict. In Proverbs chapter 15 verse 15 verse 1 it says a gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger anybody can escalate conflict anybody can make a bad situation worse but gentle people diffuse con conflict listen listen I I'm going to save you lots of headache and, and and problems in your life if you operate in the spirit of gentleness you'll confuse you'll diffuse the conflict in your life I, I love what Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 4 says in the New Living Translation I'm going to uh, I'm going to read it to you because you might need it this week listen to what it says it says if your boss is angry with you, don't quit. A ge gentle and quiet spirit can overcome even great mistakes. You might need that this week with your boss. It's on your nerves. The second thing that gentleness does is that it disarms critics. It disarms critics. 1 Corinthians 14, 13 says, we respond gentle when evil things are said about us. Listen, um, critics criticize you in order to get your response. A lot of people feed off of anger. And they criticize you because they live off your response. They want you to bite. They want you to bite. Touch your neighbor and say, don't bite. 
The reason there are some people in this world that that never really feel like living until they feel anger in their heart. And so they criticize you because of the anger that is in their heart, but they're, they're, they're living off of your feedback. So let me, let me give you a tip. If you never ever want to be criticized, if you never ever want to be criticized, um, don't say nothing, don't be nothing, don't do nothing. If you never want to be criticized, don't say nothing, don't be nothing, don't do nothing, and no one would ever criticize you. But the moment you step up, the moment you chase your dreams, the moment you try to be somebody in life, you could best believe they're going to be spiritual snipers trying to knock you down. When that happens, don't match anger for anger because you just make a situation worse. Don't match emotion for emotion because you just make the situation worse. But when it happens, respond in gentleness, for gentleness disarms your critics. Here's the last fruit. Self-control. Someone say, control yourself. Self-control literally means the ability to get a grip on yourself. Someone say, get a grip. It's the ability to get a grip on your self. Listen to the Apostle Peter, 2 Peter 1, 5 and 6. Listen to this. For this reason, make every effort, every effort. That means don't be lazy with this. You got to be make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge. Get this. What's the last one? self control so look make every effort to add self-control into your life now self-control refers to the restraining of passions that originate from your old self right it's it's about getting a grip on your old self self-control in effect is 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 checking your old self when he or she pops up in other words, he's saying, make every effort to check your old self. How many know that um, we are to live with our old self crucified? Right? When you get baptized in water, it symbolizes your old self dying and your new self being rose again to new life in Christ Jesus. But how many you know as you live out your life, that old self tends to pop up every now and then? That old self sends a pop up in a conversation, pop up at work, pop up in the dinner table. It is hard to keep that old self back into the grave. So when he or she pops up, the Bible teaches us, you better, you better get a grip. Don't let that old self uh, take control because if you let that old self out the grave, it's going to ruin your life. That's what self-control is about. The ability to get a grip on yourself. Someone say, get a grip. Can't just let your old self run your life. Can't let your old desires run your life. That's what the Bible says. We have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. But that old self comes to pop its head, her head back up. Don't let her have her way. Keep her down. Keep her down. So, so. Um, oftentimes, oftentimes I hear people pray. They say, Lord, if you just take away this desire for, for alcohol, I'll serve you. If you just, if you just take away this desire to do drugs, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. If you just take away this desire for pornography, I'll be okay. If you just take away this desire, I'll be okay. Has anybody ever felt that about anything? Like if you just, just take this desire, I don't want, if you just take this desire away, I'll, I'll be an usher or I'll be a greeter, right? We, we have this kind of, this, this attitude that we want God to take away everything out of our life. But listen, 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 my brothers and sisters, eight times out out of 10 he doesn't take it away but he desires to cultivate self-control in your life by the power of the Holy Spirit for so when that old person pops up you take control of it and you knock it back down and you say not today old self not today Spinderella not today that's what it's about. You, it's, it's not about waiting for God to take away these desires. If that's the mentality you have, you're, 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 you're approaching it wrong. Uh, like I, I heard a, a young guy say, um, oh, eh, eh, Lord, 
to take away my sex drive. And I'm like, no! You're, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You don't want the Lord to do that because you plan to get married one day. What you need to do is be praying, Lord, cultivate in me self-control so I don't blow everything up and mess up what you're doing in my life. God ain't trying to create eunuchs up in here. I don't know. Maybe he is, but I'm just saying. If we develop self-control, the Holy Spirit helps us to get a grip on that old self. When it pops up, that's where victory lies. Not saying, God, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. No, it's you standing up. And say, I'm new in Christ Jesus. My old self has passed away. I'm a new sister in Christ Jesus. I'm a new brother in Christ Jesus. Now, now listen, listen, uh, listen. Um, because self-control, man, self-control. I got to dig into this because it's one of the big things that ruins us. Self-control is one of the big things that ruins us. It ruins our relationship with God. It ruins our relationship with others. It ruins our focus. Self-control ruins our focus because there's so many distractions or lack of self-control. When we don't have self-control, it, it, it ruins our ministries. People, people blow up in ministry because they lack self-control. They, they can't control the old self. Ruins marriages, ruins ministries, ruins your focus. And, and some of y'all, some of y'all, you're, you're striving, man. You're, you're in a groove, man. You're, some of y'all, man, hats off to some of y'all, especially my, uh, our, our young sisters, single, uh, single mothers in the house with a couple kids, one kid, and you're focused, man. You're trying to work. You're trying to go to school. You're trying to bring your kids, uh, uh, to the church. You're trying to get them, learn them about, teach them about Jesus. You're focused. But listen, listen, a lack of self control can derail you. Can mess you up. All your progress can be thrown away. Proverbs 25, verse 28 says, Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self control. Like a city with broken down walls is a person who lacks self control. Do you know how important walls are? Walls provided protection to the city it guarded the city it gave safety to the city walls provided safety and protection when a city did not have no walls it became vulnerable to the attack of the enemy it became vulnerable to the attack of them when we don't have walls up because of a lack of self-control we, we we put ourselves out there for the attack of the enemy and we end up slipping into things we can't get out of and the thing about the enemy is he's so deceptive. He doesn't tell you about the morning after. No, he just shows you that same night. Doesn't show you a week after. Doesn't show you a month after. It gives you little by little. And all you do, you take the little. But the more you take the little, it grows into the big. And next thing your walls are broken down. And the enemy's all up in your house. Like a city with broken down walls is someone who lacks self-control. When I, when I look at my own testimony and I think about how on September 1993, I was sentenced to life in prison. And I remember that fateful day and I begin to think about the cause. Like, how did I end up in that spot, right? Like, how did I end up there in the Compton Courthouse being sentenced to life? At, at the age of 17 years old and, and everybody listen to this everybody listen to this but especially you young people you young people in the balcony you young people anybody young people out in that lobby you need to come back up in here you need to listen to this I was 17 years old 1993 in the Compton courthouse and I'm getting sentenced to life in prison I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself how did I end up in that position like how did that like you don't wake up and say you know what I just want to throw away my life I just want to kill somebody today you know, normally you don't wake up like that and how do I how do I end up in that position? And I was reflecting upon it. And, and let me tell you something. I can trace it down. I can trace that day, September 1993. I can trace it down to a lack of self-control. I can trace it down. I remember. 
I remember. You know when it started off? It started off when I was 15, uh, 16 years old, at the beginning of my 16th year, right? You know what happened? Um, I woke up one morning and I said, you know what? Um, I don't have to go to first period. I'll ditch first period and sleep in. I'll go to uh, school second period, right? So I started sleeping in and going to school like at nine o'clock. I did that for a couple times. Um, and about six months later, I woke up one day and you know what I said? I got this bright idea. Huh? I don't have to uh, just go to school at 9 a.m. Why don't I just go to school at 12? And then I started going to school at lunchtime. I started doing that a couple times. Six months passed by. I woke up one morning. You know what I said? Uh, why do I got to go to school at all? I don't need to go to school at all. And so I started ditching school all day long. Four or five months later, 16 years old, July 1992, supposed to be at school, but I ditched school, got a gun in my car. One thing leads to another. Boom. Wake up in the sheriff's station. Arrested for murder. How does this happen? Nine, a year later, wake up in the L.A. County Jail and get sent to the Compton Courthouse, sentenced to life. Boom. How does this happen? I didn't mean to end up like this. I didn't w dream about this when I was a little kid. I didn't, I didn't dream about this. How does this happen? It started when I let my walls down and I had lack of self control for the bible says he who lacks self-control is like a city with broken down walls he makes himself vulnerable to the attack of the enemy you end up slipping in and drowning my brothers and sisters as we reflect upon these fruit of the spirit it ought to make us cry out help us lord Help us. When we, when we uh, uh, come up underneath the burden and the weight of the fruit of the Spirit, it ought to make us cry out, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own. I can't, I can't develop. I can't control myself on my own. I, I can't be gentle on my own. Spirit of the Lord, I 